Welcome back, refurbers and scruffy looking nerve herders. In today's video, I'll show you how to make custom UV resin buttons with an LED encased inside. And if you stick around to the end, I'll even show you how to connect the LEDs to your Game Boy Color to get it powered up. So sit back, relax, and grab some snacks, because we got a long one for you today. Thank you to Rourke from RourkesRetroCorner.com. He inspired me to do this mod from a post he put up a while back, and I thought it was a really cool idea. So I went ahead and tried it out, and this is my results. So as in my previous video, I showed you how to use Oyumaru. So we got the hot water here and we put it in for two to three minutes and now it's nice and pliable. Put it up into a ball and then smash our D-pad down into it. We don't want to push it too deep. We want to just make sure all the details come out on the bottom. Now I'm keying the mold so that when we put our top half on, it'll have something to grab onto. I don't know, I'd say put about two or three holes in it so that it's easy to put the top half back on and you don't get lost on which way it goes back on the top. There it is, nice and solid now that it's had time to cool. It looks like there's some imperfections in there, but we won't really be able to tell until we pull the button out. So let's do our top half, stick it in the hot water, pull it out while it's pliable, push it down onto the top of the mold, and you wanna make it nice and even here I'm using the toothpick to create a hole for the injection point. I usually make two to three holes. It also helps release the pressure when you're injecting the UV resin. Looks good, let's let it cool. Now that it's cooled, let's open up and see what we got inside. It looks like it's got all the details pretty well on the inside. There might be slight imperfections here and there, but usually in these areas on the button, it's hard to get into, but I think this one is done pretty well. I'm going to use this drill bit just to clear out the holes, the injection point holes. I thought they were a little bit tight, so I'm just using that to clear them out. This is a useful tool to have this little drill bit piece. So if you have a little tiny drill bit, it's good to use here. So we got our buttons. I did the top and bottom halves already, so we're going to open it up and see what we got inside here. That inside of the mold looks pretty clean, and the back part looks like it's casting pretty well. Just clearing out the holes again. Here's chip LEDs we're going to work with. They're very tiny. These are hard to solder. I got these in Akihabara at Akiba LED. Alright, so let's put some flux on there. Oop, we got it connected. Yeah, these are really hard to work with. Just letting you know, this is a headache. I pre-tinned both these wires. I did not tin the chip LED. So it's important just to get the tip of your soldering iron close to the chip LED and not actually touch it like I do here. Beautiful. All right. Now the second one is a little bit harder because we got this long wire that wants to flop over and such but just either tape it down or get something to put on top of it like so now that it's settled in get our second wire and excuse the poor focus sorry I'm close and it will stick just like so very simple just patient and steady movements and tin your wires there's a test run. The LED does power on, so we've got that much done. Now in this step, I used some UV resin to encase the LED into, because these wires and these tiny LEDs easily get pulled off of their solder points. So I'm just gonna encase it in some UV resin to make it a bit stronger and we don't have to worry about it f coming apart on us. So there it is in its little tiny case. Yes, it's in its case. It still lights up. Now we're good to go to the next step. All right, so I've gone ahead and drilled 
two little holes using the same little drill bit. So then I threaded the wires of the LED through and we've got our LED there facing down or facing up, however you want to look at it, so that it shines through the top half of the D-pad. So when we put our resin in here, it'll be fully encased inside. So I'm thinking about what to put inside and I'm thinking with these pearl powder might look good in here. I've got all these molds here. Um, these are just extra molds. You should also have extra molds to dump your extra resin that is always, always left over. And you must get a syringe. Syringe is important for this. Okay, so we're set up now. I just want to add some tape to the end of this so that no resin seeps out when we pour the resin in the top of the syringe. And set it aside for later. So these are handy to have for putting your little bits in. So I got rubber bands, I got the chip LEDs, I've got little things to put inside the LEDs, or inside the buttons. These are some test bits that I did. There's glow-in-the-dark powder, which is always cool to put in the buttons. All different colors of UV resin and different types. So before we get started, let's put on some latex gloves because this UV resin is not nice to get on your hands. It stinks and it's sticky and it's hard to get off with soap. So let's just keep from getting on our hands. Tighten up the molds by, you want to make them snug with these little rubber bands. These I got at the 100 yen store. They're pretty cheap and they're kind of cool because they got sparkles. They're just snug and not too tight. If it's over tight, it may deform the mold, the casting, once it gets hit with the UV because it adds, adds some heat and actually kind of breaks down the mold a little. So it's important to have it not overly tight, but just snug enough. All right, just inspecting it. Make sure we got it on our key marks. I usually try to put two bands on it just to keep the the force nice and even. There it is looking good. Just make sure it's not covering the injection holes. All right, and it looks okay. What good colors of resin go good? So these are some of my test bits. Had kind of like a reddish, and here's a kind of a milky pink color. And these are some bits we can put inside. Let's ask R2 what he thinks. What about these pink uh, stars? So it looks like he enjoyed the the pearl mica powder. What do you think, R2? Are we gonna go with the pearl? Awesome. So R2 wants this pearl today, so we're gonna go with the pearl. And he also said he gets partial to pink milk. So we got pink milky UV resin that is sold as is, so we don't have to mix any dyes in this one. Just pour it in there. Let's speed this process up. I put in two. I think that's six grams of it is what I put in there. And then I'm going to put, I don't know, let's put about 10. You know, it's up to you how much pearl you want to put in there. Now you can put anything in here, just as long as it flows through the syringe tip. So we're going to stick with this one today. Just nice, firm grip. It is pretty tough to push down on the syringe once you put the top in. Steady, even pressure. You can see it moves really slowly, and it takes a lot of pressure to push this down. So just injecting it in there like so. All right. Here's the buttons. For a dump mold here, but just make sure the tip stays on. Oh, goodness gracious me. Yeah, just keep the tip snug. We're going to harden it up real quick with some UV light. Now that it's all cured, let's check it out. That is some awesome looking button. I mean, that looks really good. This one is probably one of the best ones that's come out. Chest it with the battery, turns on carefully with the wires. This came out pretty easily actually. You see there's little bits here and there. Snip those off with a X-Acto knife. Clean up the buttons, clean it all up. On closer inspection, you can see there's imperfections where I actually stuck the syringe too deep into the mold and it caused those two little circle patterns on the A and B buttons. But overall, these came out really well and they're gonna look really good inside the Game Boy Color. So let's move on to what you all waited for is how to hook these bad boys up. 
you're going to want to get rid of the extra slack on these wires like so I did it off camera just put the board on there and check the length and give yourself enough length but not too much length because it will cause distortion all right so we got our resistor on there we're going to connect it up to the positive terminal on the board which is right here on the right hand side of the board it's the for the third third one up from the bottom that is our positive all right and now with our negative terminal on the other side just opposite to that it is the one on the far bottom side and that's all for the soldering just want to tuck the wire in and make sure it's not going to cause any problems and you might want to put shrink tubing heat shrink tubing on the uh, resistor so it doesn't cause any shorts but I didn't hear just for quickness of the video and I'll probably do that at a later stage so reconnect the screen pop the back back on the d-pad is moving nice and smooth put our batteries in slap in Kirby turn it on voila we have the Kirby buttons playing the Kirby game and the d-pad lights up so do you have any theme button ideas please write them down in the comments I'd also love to see your results so please share them with me either here on Instagram Twitter or Facebook I'd like to thank Rourke at Rourke's Retro Corner .com and Dustin at Handheld Legend for kindly going out of their way to help me with technical questions that I had thanks to you all for staying to the end go out there and make your own creations and share them with others don't forget to subscribe and like if you did this is Scruff Dog signing out. See you in the next one. Who's scruffy looking?